what's up y'all so i got a clip for y'all it's ice cube responding to cat williams check it out what's cracking this your homie ice cube um just wanted to address a few things you know everybody been checking out the internet um my man cat williams um you know first of all i just want to say you know we shot that movie over 20 years ago so you know people have different perspectives and it's been a long time um i also want to say you know every comedian that i've worked with every comedian that i've put in a movie i only put them in the movie because i thought they was funny i thought they was perfect for the part um, I tried to put them in a position to win. Um, that's what it's all about, you know. I don't, I don't, you know, I look at <clears throat> from, you know, Chris Tucker and Bernie Mac and Mike Epps, Cat Williams, um, you know, Ricky Smiley, Michael Blackson, um, Cedric, um, Cat, I mean, Kevin. Kevin Hart, um, you know, all these guys I know are funny as hell, you know, they, I didn't discover them, you know, they were doing their stand up or doing their thing and I, I knew that they were great and that they could act and that, um, you know, if I, if I have an opportunity, I was going to give them an opportunity, you know, to me, that's what it's all about. Um, you know, far as, you know, specific things. You know, um, Cat was 100 on, on a few things, uh, most of what he was saying. Uh, a couple things, you know, um, I just want to clarify. Uh, when we bring in a new, you know, comedian, um, we do have them try out for different roles. So Ricky did um, give Money Mike a shot um, but when we saw him and, you know, we kind of saw how he moved and how he was, you know, um, auditioning, we decided that he would be a better, uh, you know, Santa Claus, uh, which was to me the perfect cast. And, um, when we saw M Mike, I mean, uh, <laughs> damn, I call him money, Mike. When we saw Cat, you know, when I saw him, he, I just knew that he was perfect for money, Mike. Um, and, you know, Cat, Cat, you know, said he wrote his role, which, I mean, the role was written, but he enhanced it. This is why Cat, um, was so dope in the movie. You know, Money Mike had a small role, you know, about as big as the Santa Claus role, but when we start filming, he was giving us such magic that... We kept expanding his role and giving him more to do because he was on point. Um, you know, when we shoot these movies, you know, for one, the scripts are fire or they wouldn't even do it. The scripts are la a laugh out funny. But we shoot the script. But once we get what we need from the script, we let the comedians ad lib, riff, you know, play with the words do they thing, you know, we give them a take where they can, or two, three takes where they can go off and do what they feel. Um, you know, sometimes it makes the movie, sometimes it don't. You know, when somebody gives you jewels, you want to uh, try to make sure that makes the movie. Um, so in the movie, there's second thing I want to clear up. It was never... I would never shoot a rape scene uh, in a movie, especially like Friday, um, where you actually see this happening on camera. That ain't my style. If you check out any of my movies, they not raunchy. Um, you know, we did a movie called Players Club where the subject matter was a little raunchy, but, but for the most part, um, even that, we... We left it to your imagination. So 
the only reason that kind of stuff is in the movie is because you have three villains in Friday After Next. You have the Santa Claus still in presence. You have Damon just got out of prison, uh, sweating, Craig and Daddy for the rent money. And then you have Money Mike, you know, a pimp that treats his woman, uh, you know, like a property. So Craig is always fighting the villains in the movie, you know, from the Joker brothers to Debo. And so we always we already had Craig fighting Santa Claus. And the only real way to get rid of the other two villains was to have them go against each other. And the the plier joke was always in the script, you know, it was never, um, we would never ever show that, you know, that's not my style. If you look at any of my movies. Um, so, you know, that was never a, a discussion, you know, we, you know, at, at that point in everybody's career, you know, we, we would listen to a certain extent, but we wasn't gonna, change the movie for it for any actor you know we we do what we feel and if, if it was a rape scene it would have been in the movie um it was no reason not to shoot it <laughs> but that's not my style i don't even like that kind of shit in movies um on camera and so um you know that was to me a little discrepancy there um you know cat he uh he wrote a lot of his part because, you know, like I said, he was giving us jewels, so we were keeping the camera rolling. He was coming off the dome. He was coming prepared every day to steal the show. You know, that was his mission. And, um, you know, that's what he did, you know, with the movie. Um, and it, it launched his career, you know. And um, I'm proud of the movie. I'm proud of um, all the guys who've, you know, come through, you know, a Q Vision production and went on to do bigger and better things. Um, and look, you know, a lot of people are talking about pay and how much they was paid on these movies that were extremely low budget. You know, most of these guys work a couple of days, you know. And when you're doing a movie, there's over 100 people working on the movie that need to get paid. Most of them got to get paid every day. Um, and there's pre-production and post-production, even after you finish with the actors, you got to pay editors and sound people in. And my movies are all about quality, so most of the money go up on the screen. I'm not giving you no bullshit. I'm not giving you no uh, low-budget, you know, shit you can laugh at because it's so cheap um so you know we try to put all the money on the screen and so any actor that's <laughs> mad at what they got paid you know just look at what you was doing look at where your career was at the time you know, take a look at where it is now and friday has something to do with that i believe and put a lot of people in movies, but they ain't never put me in a movie, so you could take that for what it's worth, you know what I'm saying? I've given a lot of these guys opportunities, uh, and I still act, so I'm waiting for a call. I ain't got to produce everything or write everything. Um, I got love for all the comedians that I've worked with, got, you know, much love for Cat. you know, he, uh, he spoke up for me a lot. And uh, I just wanted to be clear and clarify some things. And uh, shit, man. I hope y'all have a good 2024. Yeah, yeah. Ice Cube, he has always been a real one to me because he went against the grain and he exposed a lot of people in the industry. And uh, what he said about Cat Williams, I actually agree 100% because Cat Williams, he's a real one himself. And uh, Ice Cube, he always comes across as a genuine dude who know how to carry himself and he always gonna be good in my books and this I think this is what I think this was a uh, mature response from Ice Cube and I wish Ice Cube nothing but the best so let me know what y'all think <laughs>